All right, good evening, everybody. This is the regular meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education here on Monday, July 10th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. This meeting is being live streamed for the public on the Village of Downers Grove's YouTube channel. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Doshi. Here. Member Ellis. Here. Member Hannes is He's walking. actually walking, She's walking in. in. <laughs> Member Harris. Here. Member Olchik. Here. Member Weiner is absent. Member Hughes. Here. Tonight, members of the audience will have an opportunity to provide public comment to the board later on in the agenda. The board asks anyone wishing to make a comment to please fill out a card and indicate the topic to be addressed. These can be placed in the basket over there uh, on the table over there to my right. And I have allotted 30 minutes tonight for public comment. All right, we're going to start out as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, up first tonight is our communications. Listed on tonight's agenda are four communications received by the board. Are there any additional communications a board member would like to share at this time? And we will move on to the reports to the board. We will go ahead and start off with the superintendent's report. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, I want to first start off by uh, giving a big District 58 welcome to our new district office administrative leaders who started on July 1. Ms. Liz Earhart is our new assistant superintendent uh, for curriculum and instruction, and Ms. Michelle Kovar is our new business manager. Uh, I'd like to thank both individuals for their hard work uh, during the transition time, coming in on their own time to really get acquainted with the district and so they could hit the ground running on July 1. Uh, you've both done a great job and we really appreciate all the extra effort, so thank you. Uh, in terms of personnel, uh, we continue to be very active in recruiting and hiring both certified and instructional uh, positions for the fall. While many positions are already filled, the numbers still remain and are in progress. We look forward uh, to starting the school year fully staffed and are extremely excited about all the individuals who will be joining District 58 this fall, including those on tonight's agenda. We'll have a more comprehensive update on staffing and enrollment in August and September. Uh, there are no major enrollment changes at this time, but uh, certainly we will uh, share with the board our numbers when we get to the August meeting. In terms of curriculum and instruction, summer learning sessions are in full swing. Session two is wrapping up this week and session three will begin the last week of July. Curriculum materials are arriving at the DSC and being distributed to the schools. We're continuing to prepare for the beginning of the school year, including new teacher week, year two teacher meetings, and of course our opening institute dates. In terms of technology, uh, summer work is progressing well. Our data team is completing our year-end process and transitioning to the next school year, which starts July 1st. Uh, new wireless access points have been installed in several buildings, and our initial uh, phase of checking in, cleaning, and resetting student devices is nearly complete. While there's still much work to be done, uh, we're off to a great start and look forward to a productive uh, July and August in order to have things ready at the start of the school year. For special services, it's hard to believe, but extended school year will conclude at the end of this week and it's been another successful uh, summer of learning. Thank you very much to our students, staff, and families for everything uh, that they've done during extended school year and we look forward to a great year. In terms of facilities, that annual summer cleaning is progressing well and we thank our staff for their continued hard work. Um, it's always a huge endeavor for our staff uh, to tackle getting the rooms ready so they pull everything out, deep clean it, and then put everything back in. As far as projects are concerned, the carryover uh, for masonry work in the summer of 22 continues at Henry <coughs> Tucker, El Sierra, and Soon Highland. If you've driven by those schools, you'll see that work taking place. Um, that's uh, the carryover also from the fire alarm replacement work at Highland is completed, and the contractor has moved on to Henry Tucker uh, so we can finish the programming of those devices. The school maintenance grant uh, that we got, which was a sh uh, split from the state uh, with the district uh, over there for asbestos abatement is taking place at Henry Puffer and floor prep has begun in order to receive the new flooring and cabinetry which we'll install later this summer. Finally, several playground projects utilizing state and local funds are underway at Lester, Pierce Downer, Indian Trail, and Henry Puffer. Unfortunately, one of the contractor schedules has started to slip and Kingsley, Bell and Fairmount have not started yet. 
We anticipate a fair amount that uh, may be delayed due to an equipment order. Uh, we did expect some work at Kingsley by now and at Bel Air. Uh, so we are pushing that contractor to start. They're still sharing with us that they'll be able to complete it on time. But obviously, being after the 4th of July, we wanted to meet with them to hear what their plan is. And so I know Kevin Bardo was working on that. And uh, this is important to our families, especially those that donated and made contributions. And so we want to make sure that these are up and ready to go as promised. Um, and just a reminder, the substantial completion date that we put in the bid was the, you know, before the start of the school year. So we want to make sure that those get in. And so we're working with those vendors who may be behind. In terms of public relation, real quick, there's two things that, that we're doing with this strategic planning. We're working on a draft vision, mission, and guiding principles, which are attached to this uh, document. That's for the board to review and to uh, take a look at. We did not make many substantial changes from the current uh, vision, mission, and guiding principles uh, because we really viewed our work as a continuation of the last strategic plan and it served the district very well. We did go, however, go in and make language changes where it made sense, uh, got rid of some of the redundancies, but overall, you'll see that the mission, the vision that we're recommending um, stays relatively the same. Um, we did want to get to the board in July so you had time to review it. Please contact me with any concerns, questions, or anything you'd like to see added. We will then take that to the DLT in August. The board will get a chance to look at that once again. And of course, that won't be finalized until the end of October, but we are working through that. And like I said, we're not recommending any substantial changes. Um, one of the things we really liked about the current mission, vision, and guiding principles is that it, it really is centered on doing what's right for all kids, uh, no matter what their background is, whether they're um, a gifted student, special education, general education student, it's really about serving all of our students. We're also getting ready to meet with our development team starting this Thursday. As a reminder, the development teams are those teams that will now take the priorities that were set out by the community in the survey and with our uh, planning groups that we met with in May and we'll start writing action plans. We'll bring those action plans to the DLT for a review and then ultimately the board a couple times in the fall so you'll be able to see those before we ask you to approve that at the October meeting. But uh, we are moving along very well with this strategic plan and I'd like to thank my team uh, for all their hard work and all the meetings that they'll uh, conduct over the summer. That concludes the superintendent's report. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any questions or comments on the uh, superintendent report? Fantastic. That brings us to the monthly business report and treasurer's report. Welcome, Todd Drayfall. Good evening. You have uh, in your packet the, the treasurer's report. Uh, you don't have a year-to-date report. We're still finishing up and reviewing and, and going through the process, and so uh, we will have that out um, uh, as soon as we can get that wrapped up and, and, and go through and figure out what, what accrues back forward uh, being year-end and, and, and so forth. So we'll have that for the board. Uh, once we've gotten a chance to go through all of that. Uh, you do have one item on the agenda for action uh, this evening, that is the food service contract. And I won't summarize the three-page memo, uh, but essentially um, we've gone through a process um, and we are recommending and awarding a, a one-year uh, contract under the National School Lunch Program format with the state uh, to Quest Foods. Uh, we have two representatives, Patrick and... and I knew that was just uh, from Quest uh, here this evening, um, and, you know, for that, and they are anxious to get started and uh, uh, to get going. And I should add, part of that will be working through and developing um, a, a format for elementary uh, opportunities uh, for folks to order, um, you know, at, at the elementaries and have that that system. So we'll be working with them. Uh, as to how that will be working out um, and get that and information will come out later on for that. Any questions or comments? Yeah, can you maybe just elaborate just a little bit more on the elementary process of how <coughs> that's so going to play out? We, um, the, the, the district has under the National School Lunch two applications, middle schools. We don't have uh, a format where we're serving obviously in the elementaries and that was a in a, a conversation that the community and the board has asked for. Um, so that uh, we've, we've had a vendor who uh, did not end up uh, being one of the, that, that submitted a proposal but went through uh, early on in the process and evaluated and looked at facilities and what it would take um, to bring a full program out and that would be updating a lot of the equipment uh, in the kitchens in the, in the middle schools 
uh, so that they can prepare and then equipment in the middle in the elementaries. Um, that's our long term and that's our format. So what we hope, what we plan to do is get to that, and we will get to that before the new kitchens are installed are, are built at the new middle schools. They will be built and designed to do that to meet that need. We will have something before that piece. So that step two is having a program that we are satelliting out from the two, two middle schools to do that. Prior to that, uh, there's a format of packaging, of pre-ordering, setting up a format where parents can go online and order uh, and then have, um, del and we have delivered to the buildings daily, weekly basis, you know, uh, each day, uh, meals for students. Um, that is actually one of the things I know that uh, Quest Foods has done and is doing in other districts. And so that's a process that we hope to, to work out whether with them or a third party as a stopgap to give that opportunity for parents um, until such time as we have structure, format, and equipment in place um, to do a full program at the elementaries. So it's kind of a, it's gonna be a three-step process first the package order online format is how we are envisioning it right now. Then the satelliting out of the existing facilities with updating of equipment um, and some equipment at each of the elementaries. And then, you know, the final step, once we've opened those kitchens, a full program format where um, we have all of the, we're meeting all the needs and, and, and having all of that service because the structure is set up and, and that's how those kitchens will be built and designed. So yeah. that's, that's, that's the sliding scale as to how we're going to get there. Um, time frames on how we start, you know, we, we hope our, our, our plan right now is to, by sometime in this fall, get that prepackaged format structure up and running. It won't happen the first day of school. First day of school, we want to make sure we're running the program as we are um, and, you know, getting, you know, they've got to hire staff and get, you know, get people in. Uh, they will have a, a person who's been a chef running the program. Uh, which is also a, a, a change uh, from previous formats. So, you know, the, the goal is to, to improve quality, but then, you know, to, to move into that, that format with, for parents uh, in this fall. And then one of the things too, Steve, is, is once, uh, assuming the board approves our vendor tonight, that work really begins in, in earnest. Um, now that we have that, that vendor secured, or we will have that vendor secured, our goal is to get that up and running a, an option at the elementary schools is, as soon as possible. Obviously, we couldn't do that until we got a vendor on board. So that <coughs> work really begins tomorrow morning, uh, sitting down, talking to request, and in, in to say, okay, how feasible is this? When is this feasible? How can we communicate this out? What is this going to look like if you're able to do that? If not, there are other third-party vendors that we're you know, having preliminary conversations with as well. We'd obviously like to do it with the same vendor, and so that's what we're gonna be talking about. But literally tomorrow morning, we will start talking about that, and our goal is to get that up as soon as possible. I wanna be very cautious, obviously, about promising a specific date, uh, but that work begins in earnest tomorrow morning. All right. well, well, thanks for reiterating that urgency, and thanks for the... Yeah, actually, we, we, we started having a conversation last yeah. week, and I told them, so. But yes, that's, 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 our, that's our plan, and that's our goal. No, but thanks for reiterating the three-step yep. process. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? All right, thank you. All right, that brings us to our committee reports. The policy committee has not met, neither has the legislative committee. The financial advisory committee has not met, neither has DLT or the Health and Wellness Committee. Uh, so that brings us all the way up to the SAS report. Back to you, Dr. Russell. Yeah, the SAS report, uh, as a reminder, this is a new report uh, that we started with the change in structure uh, from SAS. -ID. It has been a busy couple of months in SAS. -ID. Um, the <coughs> Board of Directors, which I am now a member of, um, and Member Hannes is a member of the Governing Board, um, has made some significant changes in leadership, uh, both within our own board. So we have a new board uh, chairperson, uh, Mark Cross, the superintendent of Cass School District 63, is the new chairperson. And also we have um, two interim leaders at SASID. Uh, Mindy McGuffin is no longer uh, leading SASID. So we've been very busy uh, getting the right leaders in there. We have two retired uh, superintendents, both who have uh, experience running special education cooperatives and our focus has been number one uh, leadership to make sure 
that all the students in the cooperative are being uh, served. And so we are continuing uh, to, to move forward with that, working with all the individual school districts uh, that the school year starts off both well inside the school district, but also at SACID. So a lot of positive uh, changes moving forward with SACID that we think are gonna be beneficial for our students, uh, the students across the cooperative, and then um, you know also beneficial financially to the uh, member districts. So a lot has been taking place at SACID this summer, but we believe it is moving in the right direction. Uh, a lot of listening to the staff members at SACID uh, to hear their experiences and how the organization can move forward and continue to grow, and, and so that's where we're at. Fantastic. Any questions or comments? I just want to say I'm glad that this report is now part of this. Obviously, we spend a lot of money with SASIT, and they, they serve a lot of our students, so it, I think it's uh, a good way to keep us surprised, so I appreciate it. Thank you. We have no discussion items tonight, so that brings us to public comment. This is an opportunity of me for members of the audience to share public comment with the board, but is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment may be added to a future agenda or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. I have allotted 30 minutes tonight, um, and we ask you to keep your comments to three minutes. I don't think I saw any cards go over there, so but I will do a call out. Is there anybody here that would like to provide public comment tonight? Okay, and that brings us to our minutes. Uh, are there any suggested revisions to the minutes as presented in the packet of materials? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the June 12, 2023 regular meeting as presented? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carried to approve the minutes of the June 12, 2023 regular meeting as presented. Next up is our consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have considered separately? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the personnel report and the financial statements consisting of the list of bills and summary? So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye, the motion carried. The consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. And in that, I know we've uh, made a new hire, so. Pass it off to you, Kevin. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, we'd like to thank the board for its approval of Mrs. Tiffany Williams for the Special Services Coordinator role. Uh, Tiffany will serve <coughs> as the coordinator uh, for our developmental learning program and help placements for the school district. This addition to our administrative team is to provide more dedicated availability and support to our district students, families, and staff within specialized programs and placements as we continue to grow in this area. As a reminder, this year we'll be rolling up a program to Herrick Middle School, and so we're very proud of the additions, but obviously with the additions uh, comes a need for more support. Uh, Tiffany stood out among the candidates for this position as she has direct experience as a teacher in an elementary cross-categorical classroom and has served as a special education administrator for students in life skills programming as well as students participating in transitional services. Most recently, Tiffany served as a special education coordinator for East Aurora School District 131. Uh, she began her career uh, with paraprofessional long-term substitute teaching experiences within programming serving students with autism and more complex communication and behavioral needs prior to her classroom teaching and leadership roles. Uh, Tiffany, we want to welcome you to the District 58 family and thank you very much for coming to the board meeting tonight. I appreciate it so much. I'm so excited to join you guys in this district. And I know I'm joining a team that just really cares about students that really can't wait to get started. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Right, we have a couple of items up for action tonight. The first one is a food service contract. Is there a motion to approve the one-year contract for food services with Quest Foods? So Some moved. Second. All right, any discussion? I, I just wanted to just make, I think this is great. I think I'm really excited that we're able to be expanding this program and providing it to more of our buildings and more of our students. One thing that does, um, give me just a little bit of concern is the increase in cost for the meals um it's a pretty significant jump i correct me if i'm wrong i don't have a ton of experience with the what what the cost is currently but i feel like it's somewhere around like 325 or 350 per meal currently we're jumping up to almost 550 per meal that's a pretty significant increase and i think it's great that the quality is improving that's a huge benefit and something that i know a lot of people have really been asking for and is needed for our our meals 100 percent but I am concerned about those families that um, might be just above the free and reduced lunch qualifications, but not at a place where an additional 
you know, two dollars per meal. It, that that's going to impact some families, and so I am a little bit concerned about that aspect of things. And just something I think to, that we need to be mindful of as a district is what can we potentially do to help those families that might be just above that that threshold where they don't qualify for free and reduce, but this is going to impact them financially. This is a pretty significant increase in cost. One of the things that we've been, and, and I don't disagree with you. In fact, I wrote the same thing to you know to the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. I think it is great that we are being responsive, bringing in a, a vendor that can provide that that quality. But certainly, Absolutely. everything is increasing. I, you know, even if we stuck with our, our same provider, we were anticipating that the costs were going to go up as our sure. contract was renewed. So, so we were expecting a cost increase. Certainly, this is a a, a big cost increase, though, when you're talking about a daily lunch. Um, one of the things that we have been very fortunate to have in all 13 of our schools um, are PTA groups and community groups that can help fill that gap with in between students who might not qualify for, for free and reduced lunch, but still have a, a, a need there, whether that's through blessings in a backpack or other community groups that help us. So we will continue to lean on those groups. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, as I've shared with the board many times, um, one of the things that I do have the ability to do, and Todd and the business office have the ability to do, for families that are experiencing economic hardship but may not qualify at that threshold, we do have the ability in board policy to um, work with families and make sure that no child ever goes hungry or in need in our school district. And we will continue to lean into that. We will continue to lean into groups like our Education Foundation because, Emily, we, we've been having this conversation. I appreciate you bringing it up, but certainly we do have concerns whenever a fee increases uh, around the district and how are we gonna meet those. And, and so those are the conversations that we're having right now. And, and uh, again, to anyone listening tonight, we will put this out in our communications. If you are having trouble uh, with fees or with food service, um, we can help families with that as we go through. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No? Okay. Melissa, please call roll. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve a one-year contract for food service with Quest Foods. Uh, next up is a purchase for 45 Apple MacBooks. Is there a motion to approve the purchase of 45 MacBooks for a total cost of $45,955? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the purchase of 45 MacBooks for a total cost of $45,955. Uh, last up in our action items is the resolution for the dismissal of an educational support personnel employee for reasons other than the reduction in force. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution for the dismissal of educational support personnel employee for reasons other than the reduction in force as presented? So moved. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. Melissa, please go roll. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to adopt the resolution regarding the dismissal of an educational support personnel employee for reasons other than reduction in force as presented. Okay. We have a constru uh, construction consent agenda tonight. Is there a motion to approve the construction consent agenda consisting of the bids as presented in the packet of materials? So moved. Second. Okay. All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The construction consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. All right, we got some announcements. Uh, Monday, August 14th at 7 p.m. will be the next regular board meeting at Downers Grove Village Hall. That's right here. All right, and then. We don't have any other. Just person. Just uh, a. Just a. Okay. All right. The board will now meet in closed session. Is there a motion to approve uh, to go into closed session for the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district? That's five ILCS one twenty two C one. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, the motion carried. The board will now move into closed session. Uh, let's try to meet up there at 7.30.